I wondered how I appeared in the moments my mind went completely blank until the moment I was able to recover. As my field of view began to distort, slowly swirling in a counterclockwise direction, I lost all sense of balance. Oh, he's getting pissed. I didn't even deny it. That was the type of frenzied state I was in. I don't blame him. How could Rena know even this? Not even caring as I mashed my head against the door, I fixated my gaze on Rena. But she didn't even flinch when she saw me do that. Were you in the house? Because when she was here before... That was before they bought it, right? So, did she come in again? Maybe? Because at first I was like, oh, maybe they just knew because they've been keeping tabs, like, even from the store, but... Maybe she just straight up saw. How could you dodge the question at a time like this? The chain and the door suddenly were no longer protecting me. There you go. Shiver ran up my spine. I tried covering up with an angry facade. Oh my god. He only caught her following him that one time coming home today. She's been following him. Oh my god. I couldn't understand why she was saying she'd been following me all this time. What the fuck? <laughs> like that night? That night I was absorbed in my phone conversation with Uishi-san. I didn't even sense her being there, standing behind the door. Behind me, standing there, just like that. ケイチ君がいろんなラーメン選んでるとこ、後ろからずっと見てたの。いろんな種類を選んでたんだよね。それでお母さんに怒られたの。高いラーメンばっかり選ぶから、一種類にしなさいって。それでケイチ君、大好
It doesn't light. Akete, Keiichi kun. The powder keg inside me finally went off. No smoldering. It just exploded. I tackled the door. The force through the door had knocked Renan momentarily off balance. I couldn't hesitate here. Holy crap, KG. I grabbed onto the doorknob with both hands, planted my feet firmly, and pulled with all my might. That slamming sound I so desired didn't happen. I could feel a tiny, disturbing bit of resistance keeping the door from closing. Did she put her fucking finger? Oh my, Renan, what did you put? And the source of that was Renan's fingers. Holy fuck. Each of those fingers wriggling, squirming around like the tendrils of a carnivorous plant through the crack in the doorway. <laughs> Rena, what the fuck? It wasn't a harsh shriek, but more of a yelp she was trying to keep back. <laughs> Kept on pulling on the door with all my might. Didn't even realize that if I didn't loosen my pull on the door at least momentarily, Rena wouldn't be able to pull her fingers out, and that was why the door wasn't closing. Hey, Chi, you gotta let her go, bro. You gotta let, like... I know he's panicked, he's just trying to close the door, and he just said, like, literally, like, he didn't even realize, but dude... Sonozaki Mafia gonna come for your ass tonight if you don't, like... If you hurt, like, Rena, like, bad... So Mafia's coming for your ass tonight. Like, dude, you need to... I don't know. I don't know what he does. I didn't care one bit for her apology. No matter how much she apologized, it didn't change any of what she had done up until now. It didn't change anything. I, I don't like this at all, but fuck, man. I didn't... Got it! Got it! Got it! Rena couldn't leave even if she wanted to because I trapped her fingers. Rena's white fingers had become deep red and were no longer even squirming. So fucking disturbing. Rena's apologies were occasionally twisted with pain, but like a broken record, she was intent on repeating it over and over. Go away, go away, go away. Stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. I pulled on the door even harder. Finally, Rena's fingers were somehow able to slip out from their imprisonment in the doorway. The moment that happened, the door closed soundly, and I could hear the thud of Rena falling on her butt on the other side. I locked the door immediately. I made a loud clunk, voicing my rejection to Rena. I believe she's sorry. No, we're not opening up. Rena leaned against the door, apologizing profusely, and nothing else. After confirming that I was sufficiently sealed off from her, I trudged away from the entryway. On the other side, I could still hear Rena echoing her apology. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Those pitiful words. They would be forever seeking my forgiveness. Hmm. Yeah, of course. No way. No way. I didn't feel bad about this at all. Don't blame you, dude. Do not blame me. That wasn't out of any sort of malice. Yeah, of course not. I just, I felt a sort of hazy sense of relief that I was able to escape from Rena. 
Yeah, obviously not malicious. He wasn't wanting to hurt Rena. He's, he's literally panicking, just like, go away, like, stop fucking threatening me all the time. Like, fucking stop it, you know? Before, Mion had threatened me at this doorway, saying there was nothing she didn't know. And just now, at the same place, Rena told me the same thing. My feeble attempts to disguise the fact my parents weren't home had served no purpose from the start. I should have just pretended to be out and not even opened the door. My meager plans hadn't helped at all. In Hinamizawa, it was impossible to outwit them. Even though I was on the other side of the door, I wanted to get as far away from Rena as possible. One step, two steps, with each one her sniveling apologies became more distant. I sprinted up the stairs and dove into my room. As you would expect, I was finally no longer able to hear Rena repeating her endless apology. Diving into my bed, I was startled by the hard lump I felt. There was something in my bed? What the fuck? What? 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 It was the receiver. I finally remembered. Oh, right. Okay, that's where he left the receiver. Okay, got it. I was in the middle of a call with Oishi-san. Looking at the clock, apparently not much time had passed since I went downstairs. That shit felt like an eternity, I'm sure. Could it be that my clock had run out of batteries? I had talked with Rena for so long. I didn't almost no time pass. But the hand on the clock was ticking forward one second every second as usual. As I put the still warm receiver to my ear, time, which felt frozen, began moving once again. Is it really not that long? Weird. It became apparent that the amount of time that had passed between myself and Oishi-san was different. Over the phone, I could hear an energetic voice from a sports program or something. It drove home just how far away Oishi-san really was. Two totally different worlds. Now, I wasn't confident that I could coherently explain the situation to Oishi-san. But I didn't need to right now. Right now I needed to know about Rena. That's right, I was planning to ask Oishi-san more about Rena, but Rena's little visit had interrupted the conversation. What was true and what was false, I couldn't tell. The one thing I knew was the single grim reality that Rena was suspicious. I might be able to figure out if I asked Oishi-san about her. Figure something out. Up until now, I had regretted it whenever I forced myself to ask about things that I was better off not knowing. But looking at it that way, you could say I'd hit rock bottom. There was no possible way I could feel any more regret than I did right now. No, rather, I wanted to know if there was anything beyond this I would regret more. Forget about tomorrow. It wasn't out of the realm of possibility for something to happen tonight. Yeah, exactly. She's, she might, yeah, exactly, she might be going back to get the Mafia, to get the, the cavalry, like, dude, like, who knows? I wanted to know everything I could. I was absolutely not going to die like this. I swear, if this is the last thing he, like, learns before he dies, I'm gonna be so disappointed, man. Not in the game, just the situation. The game's been incredible, but fuck, dude. Not without knowing anything, I definitely won't. I understood that Oishi-san was talking in circles. A bit meant I dug so deep it'd be hard to discuss with you. Excuse me, since you're a friend. Oishi-san. Spoke as calmly as possible to Oishi-san, who was continuing to avoid the issue. And then, I said it. Ryugu Rena wa... ...ayashii to omotte imasu. Kako no jigen ga... ...tatoe oyashiro-sama no tatari ni yoru mono datta ni seyo. Ryugu Rena wa kakawatte imasu. Rena-san ga ayashii to omoeru... ...gutai teki na shouko ga aru no desu ka? The manner in which Oishi-san spoke became very firm. Do you have some sort of proof? I was him talking as a detective. Jokyo shouko dake desu. I could tell even now 
I could tell even over the phone how disappointed Oishi san was. Wait, what do you expect, dude? Like. Like, the longer this goes on, it just becomes clearer and clearer. Like, like what was Oishi thinking? Bringing, like. Now, granted. Of course, like, Oishi telling, like, Keiichi, that was good to tell him. Like, I, I won't debate that, of course. Like, that, it was going to, like, happen this way, one way or another, I'm sure. I'm sure. But at the same time, like, even Mion was like, it's, like, the way she twisted it to Rena. I don't know if she believes that herself. Like, clearly it was meant to manipulate Rena, but she was like, people who talk to Oishi, they get demoned away. Which I guess implies Satoshi did as well. You know what you guys? What the fuck? Like for her to say that, like, again, the familiarity and, like, you know, Rena saying, like, uh, Keiichi's, like, events me or Satoshi's, like, if we even, like, take it to that extent with Oishi, it's like, like, like what a. Man. Like, even just thinking, like, Keiichi was probably going to be demoned away regardless whether he knew or not. Like, I just, I don't know, man. Like, we banking on Keiichi, like, getting his hands on some kind of evidence, and then, and then what? You're still going to battle the politics of the Sonozaki family off, like, one piece of evidence if he's lucky? That is, if he can even, like, escape the town from being murdered and being threatened constantly. Like, what's the what's the goal here? Like, I don't... It's suicide. And KG accurately said it before, he's just bait. Just bait sent to hopefully catch a fish. If the bait gets away, all oh, well, you know. We tried. And, you know, the juxtaposition of, like, you know, KG being like, I can hear him watching a sports program. It just sucks, man. It was always going to suck. Granted... But, you know, you know what I'm saying. I can tell even over the phone how disappointed Oishi-san was. Everything sucks, basically. Pulling on the fishing line when he felt to bite, only to reel in the bait. Dis exactly. Disappointed, but ready to cast the line once more. That's how it seemed. It's so, it's so, dis so nasty, so disgusting. Like. Which makes sense. He needs proof. I get it. You can't bring circumstantial evidence, especially against, like, you know, the whole Hinamizawa conspiracy, but, like, come on, man. It almost makes me think that Oishi is, like, expecting Keiichi to die or, like, sees that as a likely outcome. Like, well, if Keiichi dies, you know, I can acquire evidence from that and then, like, maybe be able to solve this thing finally through his death. But if he doesn't die and brings me evidence, well, even better, and I guess he lives. That's how it feels like, you know? What I meant was, you can't come and save me without proof? Man. Save me, dude. Save me. I stuck that barb in there. As oishi son loved roundabout ways of saying things, he understood me just fine. No, it's not. How? That was not the least bit reassuring, yeah. Like, I don't... Rishi-san was just using me to continue his investigation. Yeah, of course. Like, I was just going to get killed and my corpse would be an important... What did I just say? That's exactly, yeah. That's all it is. What happens to the bait? It gets eaten. Thus the intro chapter to Higurashi, right? God damn, dude. What an intro. But we're not done yet. I was just going to get killed and my corpse would be an important piece of evidence. That was all I was to him. Tell him, Keiichi. Tell him. Wishi-san went silent on the other end of the line. That may have been too blunt, but I didn't care. Yeah, fuck that. Who cares? I might die, dude. Yeah, I'm gonna be blunt. I'm not gonna politely die. What the fuck? All I needed to relate to Uishi-san was that I was currently in a very dangerous position. Yeah. You owe him that, and you know you do. Satoshi was changed. Probably, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do it. 
レナの言う転校をするでしょう。ケイジ is not even asking for much. He could be asking for a weapon. He could be asking for like, I don't know, a, a, like a vest he can wear, like, some, like something. You know, he could be asking for gear, like, I get some more intel. But he's just asking specifically about like Rena. And granted, Oishi san probably doesn't have much more about intel that would directly lead him to anything like that he doesn't already know, but you know, still. Tell me about Rena. Yeah. There you go. I was already suppressing my agitation, even without Oishi san having to tell me. It wouldn't solve anything if I continued to scream about my mistrust in the police. It would seem that I could only depend on myself and the bat Satoshi left behind to protect myself. From beyond the grave, man. Shout out Satoshi, dude. Like, poor kid. And I at least wanted to know about what happened before Rena had transferred schools. I doubt that. Oishi san realizing my resolve couldn't be swayed. My resolve couldn't be swayed, finally caved. Yes. すべてが真実ではないかもしれないということです。よろしいですね。Yes. つまりですね。レナの調査は警察としてでなく個人として行ったということですか。ご理解いただけて助かります。話のほとんどは電話、あもしくは会って聞かせてもらったものばかりです。ですから裏が取れていません。鵜呑みにしないでほしいということなんです
大石さんはその内容を知っているからこそレナたちを疑っているんですねええ疑っていますやはりレナたちが犯人ああいえ疑うとはそういう意味ではないんですウィシさんはタイプのパーソンで言うことは、コンフィデンスで、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、それは、ウシさんの声は、quite dry、certainly not the kind that would make you want to join in。ウシさんは、resume the conversation。about the dubious circumstances behind Satoshi's disappearance。the course of events leading him to delve into Rena's past。just then there was thunder in the distance。the heavy rain started pouring down。oh my god。Came without warning, the downpour fiercely beating the ground. I'd left the window in my room open a crack to let the heat out. The violent wind danced into my room, making the curtains flap wildly. I got up while still on the phone and grasped the window. 学校側も被害者も告発していないので正式には事件ではないのですでですねこの辺りがどうも関係者皆さん口が重いんですよ、うん、被害者の一人は片身に後遺症を残すぐらい殴られているのにもかかわらずです学校側かもしくは表沙汰になるのを望まない何者かがいろいろ根回しをしたのかもしれませんね。Uh-huh. またカウンセリングを担当した神経科医も職業倫理に厳格な方で。That makes sense. Very confidential. もしもし、前原さん、聞こえてます ？What the fuck? Wait, k a t i There was the figure of a person standing by the light near the mailbox this whole time. Even in this torrential rain, they didn't have an umbrella. They were unquestionably drenched from head to toe. In the shower, which more resembled a waterfall, droplets of water dripped down from her hair. Dude, Rena just been standing there this whole time. Holy fuck. Oh my god. Just standing there, both arms dangling at her side. Pop filter engaged. In one hand was the stack of boxes wrapped in cloth. Her eyes focused on my room. Focused on me as I was about to close the window. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh. Perfect. Hi. Hello. Her mouth was methodically repeating a chewing motion. She's, saying, she's still saying sorry. It was as if she had something hard to chew in her mouth with her cheeks puffing out. Could she be eating over there? Wait, the fuck? What is she chewing? Yeah, look at her fingers. Holy fuck. How could it be that at this time I was more enthralled by Rena? Instead of the shocking developments being brought up to light by Oishi san. Probably because this is the immediate <laughs> threat or danger or worry. That makes sense. If it hadn't started raining, I wouldn't have gone to the window. Then I wouldn't have noticed Rena, nor would, have I, nor would I have noticed that. Rena's mouth was moving in the same pattern. She wasn't eating something, she was repeating something. She's still saying sorry? What was it? Was she repeating to me? 
What was she saying? Why was I right up against the window, fixated on her? She never stopped saying it. Even in this torrential downpour, Ren, I was still apologizing. Ugh. The other self inside me drew the curtain hastily with my right hand, blocking my view of the outside. But even doing that, Renault's relentless apology still reached my ears. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I forgive you for this. Will you forgive me for that? Please stop. Please stop. Please stop. Please stop. I'm sorry. 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 Damn it. Should I have to forgive her? I'm the one who wants to be forgiven. What part of me can't you forgive? I won't be killed. If you won't forgive me, then I won't forgive you either. I won't forgive. 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 I won't forgive. At the 7th Mart. Ooh, we get to see the stalking in action. Alright. Reign of Apologies. Achievement unlocked. Wow, the, the art of Rena on that one looks way sadder. Yeah, Keiichi saying forgiveness about what he did to her fingers. Like, them being like, you won't forgive me, I won't forgive you. Like, dude, it's... They won't be able to pretend anymore. I don't think you can go to school anymore. Like, but like, it's over. All right, split personality. With four question marks.複数の人格を持つことによる逃避と考えられています。多重人格は逃避の一つなのですか？フォームアブスケープ。さようです。その目カニズムは完全には解明されていませんが、精神を守るために脳が行う防御行動の一つではないかと考えられています。it's crazy how the brain adapts and changes in incredibly traumatic situations. We do, still don't know the full extent of what Rena has gone through, but it would make sense. For例えば、貧乏な人がお金持ちになった自分を想像するという現実逃避ってありますよね。これも多重人格なわけですか? 極論はできませんが、抗議的には総解釈できます。つまり誰にでもあり得る現象なのです。その現実逃避の見境がなくなると二重人格になるのですか？ちょっと難しいですね。そう提唱する説もありますし、否定する説もあります。諸説紛糞
幼少期の育児体験が大きく作用するのではないかと言われています。そういえばこの A 君も家庭に問題を抱えてるんですよね気の毒に7つの人格を持つ青年 A ベンネスでは VTR の続きをどうぞですがその前にコマーシャルガッソシリー It is a f- it is, that is a funny thing Because,、uh, I don't know how often I've seen that, but like,、um, like people romanticizing something like that. It's like, oh, it's like a, a cool, you know, it's like a, it's like a superpower. I don't know. So strange、um, that people would do that or like think of it like that. At the seventh mark, here we go. Don't you play the happy song? How dare you? The seventh mark was a bargain supermarket with food and alcohol. What's this, Keiichi? So many. There's no reason to get all the different kinds, is there? I flopped all the different colored cup noodle bowls into the cart. I've got a lot of cups in the cart. I've got a lot of cups in the cart. I've got a lot of cups in the cart. I've got a lot of cups in the cart. I've got a lot of cups in the cart. I've got a lot of cups in the cart. I've got a lot of cups in the cart. I've got a lot of cups in the cart. And、then there's the spicy Korean noodle、uh, cups. I love getting those. I don't eat those anymore because I've、uh, been doing good and being healthy lately. But、uh, yeah, those are very good. I knew it was pretty selfish of me, but I thought I'd at least give it a try. Keiichi, buy them in the big case. It's cheaper. Oh, yeah, you've got to buy in bulk. That faltered. Well, I had a feeling it'd end up like this. Now that dad had thrown his hat into the ring, I'd have to compromise. I was resisting as a formality. I had already given up inside and wasn't sure which case of noodles to get. If you can't pick, then mommy will pick for you. You don't have to rush me.、I、quickly search the cases of noodles for what I want pork bone and ginger, large cup? Hey, Keiichi, can't you get a more normal one? Wondering how that would taste. Pork bone sounds good, but ginger with that? I don't know. I've had ginger before, of course, but I don't know. I'll be down to try. It does seem, seem like a strong flavor, though, so I get her complaint. If I let mom pick, she'd err on the side of safety and get soy sauce or salt flavored. So when I plunked a large box of pork bone flavor in the shopping cart, mom looked back at me with an expression as if to say, These ones? To show her this was my last compromise, I began explaining the choice. <laughs> Are we literally just seeing the whole normal scene but knowing that Rena is just watching him and has been behind him the whole time? So I guess his parents didn't see her either? How is she so sneaky in the store? I get him not noticing her. But even the parents? Like, that's like three fields of view. Six eyes, man. That makes me more sus of the fact that they just suddenly went to Tokyo, apparently, but I don't know. But it's funny if this scene just plays out normally and we're just, oh yeah, Rena's watching him. Haha. <laughs> I remembered insisting that the noodles I picked were the right kind. Oh, wait. Ah, here we go. In this frozen memory in time, this encapsulated world. I didn't have the power to look around my surroundings. So, I did what I could and reached out with my hearing and vision, sharpening my senses to find the presence I overlooked. No matter how much I searched through my field of vision, I couldn't see Rena. I rewound the situation, searching. But of course, I couldn't find her. Then, was she spying at me from my blind spot? I go through the sound and presences again, looking. I could sense the other customers. They were all mixed about, moving as they please. There was nobody looking over this way and no one trying to get behind me. Not here. Couldn't be here. Probably wasn't here. I would definitely notice if someone was right behind me, even when I wasn't on my guard. I smiled wryly at the thought of using a vague word like probably right before contradicting it with definitely. 
Then, it passed my mental replay as a chill ran down my spine. There was definitely a presence like a shadow behind me. That was a terror unlike any other. If a presence really had manifested behind me, I would definitely have turned around to check for it. But the world had moved on, and there was no way for me to turn around. While carrying that frightening shadow on my back, I was gleefully running around the store searching for a case of noodles. Running through the instant noodle section, bad-mouthing my mom. But there was that presence constantly at my back, sticking to me like a shadow. No way to see what it was, realizing it now after the fact was horrifying and repulsive. In that moment of time, I was running around gleefully, carrying that cardboard box. Tip-tap. But listening to that moment again, I could hear footsteps other than mine going pit-pat with every stop. Tip-tap, tip-tap, tip-tap. Pit-pat, pit-pat, pit-pat. Tip-tap, tip-tap. Pit-pat, pit-pat. Tip-tap, tip-tap. Pit-pat, pit-pat. While I was running, the sound of those barefoot footsteps going pit-pat were right behind mine. Me running around gleefully in that closed-off moment in time. But I didn't hear it. No, I heard it. That's why I remembered it. I didn't think I had heard anything. That's why I didn't turn around. That is why I didn't turn around. In that moment, the pit pat of those footsteps were following me the entire time. I couldn't run faster and escape. I couldn't run any faster than I had ran at that time. I couldn't turn around. I hadn't turned around before, not once. And I returned to my parents and started talking. The shadow-like presence was right at my back. Since I didn't move, the shadow didn't move. That's why it made no sound. That was all. At that time, I hadn't taken a single step while talking with my parents. I was just standing there. This was undeniable. And yet, I heard it. A pit pat. That shouldn't be. If I took three steps, it followed three steps. Wasn't that the rule? There was no sound other than that. At that time, the entire world had gone dark. A sudden darkness. It was the end of my reflective journey. I was tired. I wanted to end it. Someone turned on the light. Except my body couldn't move. As if I was sewn into that moment in time. Pit pat. My past self's hair stood on end. That's impossible. Now that's just breaking the rules. I haven't moved. So you shouldn't be moving either. I couldn't move. So you shouldn't be able to move either. Follow the rules. Pit pat. Yet that sound echoed in the darkness once again. The hair on the back of my neck pricked up on end. It was so close that it was hard to tell whether it was touching the hair or not. Why couldn't I move? Like how the presence was moving behind me. I quickly realized I could move. It's just that I was scared and didn't want to. But now was the only time I could turn around. It was something unforgivable in this moment in time. But I needed to turn around immediately. As if my entire being was trying to force me to stop, I began to administer a pain like a needle being stuck into my every pore. I'll turn around. Turn around. I'm not scared at all. I'll turn around. I'll turn around. I'm not scared at all. The scream I was unable to vocalize. I turned around. At first, I couldn't understand the meaning of it. Uh, uh. What? What is this? Just as a person's mouth might bite into an apple, slurp the juices, and finally discover it was an apple, my mind began to process the scene before my eyes by eating the apple. Munch, munch, chew, chew. Slurp the juices and discover the apple. Meaning, what was in front of me was... What the fuck? 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 Achievement unlocked, Detective Onikakushi. Is that all the tips? Does that mean that was the last of the tips? The ending of that is like... <laughs> I mean, it could be that he's just still having trouble, like, truly accepting 
but in his like hindsight like reflection of what he heard like you know his senses and you know the pit pad behind him even it like you know following the rules like when he was moving and also it not following the rules it was haunting him and when he finally bit into the apple as he put it which is a great way to put it um what did he see I don't want to say just like simply Rena because it's not simply at all. You know, it's it's been very fucked up regarding her and Keiichi, but it's like that was very interesting the way that was. But um, yeah, that's it. That achievement, yeah, makes me makes me think that was maybe the end of the tips. So uh, we will see. Split personality one, yeah. I mean, it just points to. What we almost found out about Rena from Oishi, we didn't get to after all, after Keiichi was completely just taken out of... We're sucked back into the moment by Rena repeating I'm sorry with her bloody fingers smashed by the door. Like, God, that scene was so gruesome and brutal. Just standing there in the torrential rain and Keiichi just looking at her and just his heart just like... Wrenching from what he did, from what she's done to him and like... Wanting to be forgiven, but not, but then not wanting to be forgiven because he can't forgive her because she won't forgive him. It's like all this, you know, it's too much, way too much. And I'm so glad Keiichi called out Oishi and was just like, dude, you're leaving me out here to die, man. Like, just tell me about Rena, honestly. Like, I'm not going to die without knowing the truth and, it, and it, just about her, you know, chapter one. At the tip of the iceberg, man. Heichi is, in is incredibly unlucky. Smart boy. He's so unlucky. So unlucky. That it happened to be him. But, um... Yeah, that was crazy. I'm enjoying I'm enjoying the shit out of this, man. We'll, we'll see, um... See how this ends up. This recording will be split up into two parts, so... Be able to get out more Higurashi content and give me some uh, more room to record, man. So I'm, I'm happy to keep doing it, man. And then we'll jump straight into the next chapter, uh, of course, man. Very much enjoying this. But yeah. Sorry, I'm just coming down from, <laughs> from playing this again. Talking about things. But yeah, that's it. Uh, thanks again. See you next time. Peace.